Welcome to the inaugural Unreality Core video podcast, a place where imagination is brought to life. In these videos, we are going to be talking with the people who drive our hobby and make it as exciting as it can be. Today, we talk to Shane Hensley, president of the Pinnacle Entertainment Group, a man who started with a game store, then went on to write for several game companies, including TSR, White Wolf, and Western Games. He then went on his own to create the Savage Worlds role-playing game with its many setting possibilities, such as Deadlands, Rifts, and the new Savage Worlds Pathfinder, which has been successfully funded on Kickstarter. So without further ado, let me introduce to you the man Shane Hensley. Hey Shane, how you doing today? Hey Alan, I want a cool echo effect like that. So hello, 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 <laughs> hello. Well, the mixing board, and I haven't found how to do that with you yet, but believe me, I'll do it just to have you say hello. Okay, All well, right. I have a voice made for writing, so uh, the echo would have been nice, but we'll oh. make do. Oh, it's it's fair enough. Oh, it's it's beautiful. All right. So I'm glad you can find time out of your busy schedule. Uh, that that was an amazing event that happened uh, on on your behalf, and yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna touch on that and and basically I'm gonna be putting you on a pedestal. So <laughs> so just uh, just prepare for it uh, and and accept accept the love coming this way. I'll All try. Right. That's tough for me, but I'll try. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I met you uh, over twenty years ago. I don't even remember the convention I met you at. And at that time, you were producing a miniature battles game at that time. Uh huh. And could you touch on what that game was and what it, yeah. and what it meant to Pinnacle Entertainment Group? Are you talking about Fields of Honor or Great Rail Wars? Great Rail Wars. Yeah. So uh, Fields of Honor was actually Pinnacle's first product. It was a historical miniatures game. As you can probably see behind me, I am a, uh, a historical wargaming nut. Um, Great Rail Wars was um, created soon after Deadlands came out. And um, we, we wanted to do a miniatures game for it. And we wanted something to be kind of fast and furious and fun. And little did I know that would become a, a tagline years later. And uh, we wanted something that our wives would play with us and uh, that our, you know, non war gamey friends would be excited about, right? Awesome. So not only did we try to make a, a fun, simple, fast system, we built in a lot of things to the game that I, I think, I, I can't say that they influenced uh, Games Workshop or anybody else since, but they have turned up in those things. So maybe maybe they spread out. Maybe we all just had the, the same cool idea. But for example, we had, uh, twisted terrain so that when a figure first entered a, a, a batch of terrain you'd roll on a table to see what happened we had twisted tales which were uh, you know kind of narrative scenarios that happened in the game with events that were triggered by by things that happened so we you know we really wanted to make it a story right that you could tell afterwards and we made sure that of the the six factions in the great rail wars you know there was something for everybody there were there was a voodoo faction, there was a, a witch faction, a gunslinger faction, you know, a little bit of everything, and it and it worked. And uh, the game was actually super successful. We kind of bungled uh, keeping up with it afterwards. We merged with another company, and we had different goals, and you know, that's a whole long, boring story, but uh, it was very successful. We sold out everything we made for it, and I wish we'd kept up with it better, because, man, I loved it. Yes, and it, it was very impressive to see. And I'm a little bit of a historical nut, and my wife wants me to empty the garage, but it's not happening <laughs> because that's all being shoved into my coffin when I'm finally carried off. So, <laughs> okay. In fact, I might be it might be melted and just poured on top of me. You know? Oh my gosh! Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of interesting. Actually, make a coffin out of your melted miniatures. <laughs> Oh. Believe me, I don't think anyone would be able to lift it. <laughs> know the feeling. Ah, so let's get forward here a little bit. So you said Rail Wars came came out after Deadlands. And, yeah. And Deadlands, that that being uh, the first official core game that that your company had put out. Correct. Yeah, and uh, the original Deadlands system was meant to 
uh, emulate like the outlaw Josie Wales, right? That yes. that chunky chuck pop, pop of you know bullets hitting flesh, especially zombie flesh, and it, it worked pretty well for that. You know, a gunslinger would get multiple shots. The you know the mad scientist and the huckster, which all developed at the same time, would not get as many actions, but they were more complex and you know yada yada. As the game grew, and especially once we got into Hell on Earth, that system became a little too heavy. So we kind of looked back at Great Rail Wars and thought, wow, that that system works really well and seems to capture everything we're looking for. Uh, maybe that could be adapted, you know, for a new edition. And, you know, long story short, the D20 craze came and went. We had a terrible time in our business and there was nothing to lose. So I made my, you know, what I thought would be my last game ever, Savage Worlds, based on Great Rail Wars mechanics. And lo and behold, it was slowly successful and just kept building steam from there. Yes. And we will now come to, ooh, where is it at? This beauty right here. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So how many iterations of Savage Worlds uh, existed before this one? So I think there's four really okay. uh, there might be like a, a different cover on one but i i kind of think of them as four i'm looking at my shelf uh making sure that's right you know deluxe and explorers are kind of the same to me um so then there were you know there were there were two before that and then this one so uh you know they're all pretty much the same game a few things have changed certainly some of the specifics of like edges and hindrances have changed and so on but you know it's it's pretty much the same game it was 15 years ago Okay, and um, I started I started running games for this last June. This was one of the things that kept me sane throughout this entire period. It, okay. it really was. And every Sunday at 1 p.m, me and eight other people would jump wow. into, yeah, would jump into would jump into a Facebook messenger and okay. we, and we would play from two to four hours each weekend in wow. camp in campaigns that i put together on and campaigns i put together on this and and shane put a campaign together on this okay and, and to talk to you about the versatility of this the first the first game i started running in june was a uh, was a bash together star trek um starfleet battles okay um campaign in which the narrative was uh kazinti specialist team had to go through klingon in Romulan space to look for uh, what was basically the Scientorium book <laughs> okay, cool. to, to, to find, to basically um, look for artifacts that uh, that would be used to enhance, uh, to enhance their lot in the ongoing factional wars they uh -huh. had with the other clans in Kazinti space. So lo and behold, there's a game system here that I can, I can create characters. Uh, I can create races. Um, also, I had taken advantage of your, of your, um, oh, I can't, I can't, oh man, the last Parsec box set. Uh -huh. I got in on that campaign and I was able to use every, every book in there to represent something. Okay. I had, awesome. I had, I had a hunting preserve, which, which was which Leviathan. Was, Leviathan. Yeah. Uh, we, <laughs> Uh, we had uh, the latest, the, pr the prison planet, uh, uh -huh. Iron Gate. Penty. Yep, we were yeah. using Iron Gate for that. And and after that campaign ended, we went to a fantasy game in which okay. in which it was based in tenth uh, century tenth century Europe with with fantasy races ad added in. Okay, and being able to create any character to your imagination how powerful you want them to start how many how many things you you want how many hindrances you want them to have how many edges you want them to have all played out well and balanced and that took us and that took us from september all the way to last sunday wow and and you played on facebook messenger we played on facebook messenger. <laughs> we played that's, on facebook messenger that's hardcore man Hey, it's a beautiful system. It's unlimited time. Uh, the the video and sound quality is fantastic, and 
I, I can say I we got the most use of it. Fantastic. We got the most use of it. And that's thanks to you. Well, I guess Facebook has to take some credit there, but well, uh, I well, think Facebook. mostly it's it's thanks to you guys, right? I mean, you put it together. I just made a little tool set. You put well, it together. Well, you made a little tool set, but um, such things like the fantasy companion, the horror companion, the science fiction companion, the um, superhero companion. Yeah. Those four books, you can put together any world and you have it clean, you have it laid out, um, and my hat's off, as well as pages 54 and 55 of this book that I have showing here. Your character creation system is possibly one of the easiest systems that we can come across. So. Well, I, I think, um, you know, maybe for a, a game that, that steps that I, that I think tries to straddle both narrative and crunch. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm glad to, I'm glad, I'm glad you think that. Cause that's certainly the goal. Uh, you know, there's easier, right? Like fate or something, but uh, you know, I think that's to still have underlying crunch, you know, that, that was our goal and man, am I glad it worked for you. And, you know, it works for us because we make a lot of different weird settings, you know, everything from rifts to necessary evil, which is supers to, you know, very low powered stuff. Like I can't wait for people to see uh, Tim Early's holler. You know, you're just poor people in rural Ap Appalachia. You got nothing. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> a bear is terrifying. <laughs> uh, and as long as the challenges are there and that's another thing, the, the challenges are there. Yeah. You want to hear what I just ran with it? What? I ran a weird wailing one shot. Yeah, well, it turned into a three session thing and, and everybody's having a blast and sea shanties were sung, which is a nightmare <laughs> over uh, the internet. But, uh, I, I've been reading some uh, historical books lately about whaling and I, I run a lot and I listen to, you know, books while I run and I just happened to get on this whaling kick recently, you know, it's a horrible, horrible industry, right? But, you know, as far as like immersing yourself in, the, in a, as, as an adventure, it's fascinating. And uh, it, it's been gruesome and awful, and um, it's it's a little mishmash between uh, Mutiny on the Bounty and uh, In the Heart of the Sea, Moby Dick. Yes. So yeah, it's it's been terrible, <laughs> terribly fun, <laughs> terribly fun. And that's yeah. just it. The entire goal of any of any game that you involve yourself in or immerse yourself in, the right. goal is to have fun. The goal is to have fun, and what this system allows that I've seen so far is that is that you can go as heavy narrative as possible and the mechanics don't get in the way and very easy to learn. Well, that's, I mean, that's the goal, right? And, and that's, right. that's exactly how I ran this. This is a, a group of uh, people who don't play a lot of games. So, you know, we'll do stuff like, um, uh, you know, make a, make an athletics role, to you know put your harpoon into the whale right yes and my wife critically failed that role so you know it, it this is not a uh you know make a fighting role make a damage role kind of thing right it's a okay so you put the harpoon in the whale the rope wraps around your leg and <laughs> it takes off and you were dragged into the ocean with the whale it's beginning to sound it's diving deep what do you do you know that kind of thing right so it's it's a very narrative fast kind of thing and I love, uh, you know, I, I play all kinds of stuff, including, you know, purely narrative, no dice games, but I like dice. And I think they help us kind of um, tell a story, right? Like I wouldn't just say your character gets wrapped up in the harpoon and dragged down into the depths, right? Well, I mean, I might. You might. <laughs> I'm a jerk. It's the wife. But, uh, <laughs> when, you know, when the dice give you something really good or really bad or right in the middle, that helps me tell the story. It helps you tell the story, right? So I can run it, you know, with miniatures and tactics and all that stuff, which I've done plenty. And I, you know, I love doing that too. And sometimes I just want, want to run something really fast and furious and narrative and it works. So, you know, that, that goal has been accomplished. You know, there are, there are things we make better and better, I think, with every book we put out as we learn and we see how people interact with it, but the basics, they work. Now, in the last video cast you were in during the end of the Kickstarter, there was a comment that came out about dungeon crawling. <laughs> yep. 
And where did that stem from? What was the comment exactly? So I'll tell you what I think it stems from. The comment has been several times in the last, I don't know, five or six years that Savage Worlds can't do dungeon crawls. So the, uh, you know, the first thing we ever put out has a lot of dungeon crawls in it, Evernight. But I think that stems from uh, D20 based games are, um, they're ablative games, right? You got a pile of hit points and you, they, they go down as you progress through the dungeon, right? And as uh, one of our team members, Don said today in his design corner, the only hit point that matters is your last point. Not entirely true in my opinion, because you worry about it, yada, yada. But, uh, you know, there are no effects from that as you go until, until you lose the last one, unless you're playing with, you know, home rules or whatever. So... Dungeon crawls are about wearing the party down, both in resources and hit points until you get to the final boss. And, you know, how much can you save? How much resource management can you do? And so on. We have all those things too. Our wound system just works differently, right? Right. So to us, excuse me, the resource management is your bennies, your PowerPoints, et cetera. So what we've done, we, we've actually kind of tweaked a few things and all this is still in uh, in playtesting right now we're playing through rise of the rune lords we're halfway through it and uh, you know i'm happy to tell you what we're doing today it may not be what comes out in print right okay uh, for example you can't spend bennies for powerpoints okay Ooh. it is just what you got is what you got you can rest there are some edges that let you get some of that back and we're playing with some other ideas but generally you know you got what you got so you can't just be casting protection and deflection in every single fight you go into you get it back with any amp up everybody's defenses right you got to think a little bit more that alone really hits that dungeon crawl trope that i think people are looking for from d20 add add in you know 30 other things we're doing that don't they're not really changes to the game. There's a few changes here and there, like Dispel in Suede is a season spell, okay? A season right. rank spell. We need to bring that down to a novice rank for the world of Pathfinder. So we would think of it as a setting rule, okay? It's not because there are no setting rules in Pathfinder since it's got the rules in the book, right? right. But in, in Savage Worlds or Savage Worlders terms, it, it's a setting rule. So, you know, that's important because there are so many spells going off in this game that having a dispel a little earlier, for example, is a big deal in combats, right? So little things like that make big changes throughout the game. And that's the kind of stuff we're experimenting with and still nailing down. And I think we're about, I think we're about 80% done with all the little tweaks we want to make just for Galarian. Just for the Galarian. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait for the box set. Uh, when I first got involved with this Kickstarter, I had said, okay, I'll, all I need is just a book. Let's, let's go with that. And then I kept looking at what comes in the box set. So then it's like, yeah, let's get the box set. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, thanks, man. Dinner is <laughs> yeah. on you. Yeah, let's, let's get the box set. And then it was coming close to the end. And it's like, you know, for Origins, I want to go ahead and put together an intro Pathfinder thing. And it would be great, excuse me, an intro Savage Worlds Pathfinder thing. It'd be great if I have pre-generated characters and an adventure all set together. So then it's like, uh, let's get the other box set. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> yes. I'm the worst salesman in the world, you are, right? I just want to play the game. You and, play the game as <laughs> much as I want to. They used to push me out of the booth at Gen Con because I'd just give stuff away. And, you know, we got to make house payments too, but <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know, I just, I know this sounds, um, maybe a little glad handing but it it is true and you know if you know me it's just the case i think of everybody who plays their game is just a big community that i want to play with right? right i would sit down and play with you tomorrow you don't have room in your eight person group yes i but... do if you want to come in fact i'll kick people <laughs> <I would>. out <laughs> i wouldn't want that either hey i'm but... hey i'm going to the new shane bye <laughs> Sorry, other Shane. Other Shane, you're gone. But that's, and, and you know, I'll tell you what, too, just as a, as a quick aside, I've worked for a lot of other companies in my career. Uh, and, you know, the vast majority of gamers I've met in all of them have been great, but the communities are different. And I don't know what it is about our community. I don't know who sold what soul where, but man, we're just so lucky. We have guys like you and, you know, I, I could name, I could sit here and name 30 people I've played with, you know, through the years that I would name, that I would, you know, game with in a weekly session at my house tomorrow. We're just so lucky like that, so. And Thanks. lucky enough to have, a, to have a family that can, that can spare you. 
to come yeah, to, well, to do these things. That's true. That is true. Okay. So other than uh, congratulations on, on getting past that 400,000 mark. Thank you. That, uh, that, that should be somewhat of a testament as, as to. Well, it's fascinating, right? Because both the Savage Worlds core rules, Rifts, and um, Deadlands did more. But this is what's really interesting. Um, Rise of the Rune Lords, when you look at the comments throughout Facebook and, and uh, like our forums and stuff, people have played Rise of the Rune Lords three and four times. Right. So I think for a lot of people, it was, man, I'm, I'm anxious to get in on this. I'm not going to do it with Rise of the Rune Lords because I've already played it three or four times. What's next? So we got a lot of, you know, what's next? Is it Kingmaker? Is it Iron Throne? You know, whatever. Right. And we want to do all those things. So uh, I, I'm really excited to see where it goes from here, too. And I think, you know, right now we're appealing to Savage Worlds players, existing Savage Worlds players. We're not looking for Pathfinder players, right? Those guys play Pathfinder. Awesome. Keep doing that. What we are looking for, though, are fantasy gamers who have maybe haven't played a lot of either of the two games, right? right. That that pool, that's who we want to pull in and say, hey, try this. Okay. Okay. Well, when you took this yep. <laughs> and turned it into that uh-huh um there was a lot of buzz in my community i've got about 136 people on the page and people i've met over the past 20 years and doing this gaming and convention thing uh-huh uh, that are excited for this and i have also done a lot of com i've also converted a lot of people over and people saying, uh, well, soon I'm going to be running my game. Okay, what system are you using? Oh, I'm going to be using Savage Worlds. It's like, oh, all right. <laughs> Sign me up. That's awesome. Let's do it. And, and this is where it comes to what your game offers over the others versus other sandbox games. And I'm, and I'm not picking on sandbox games. These, these other games are great. I love how, how you how you basically started integrating these things that uh, you integrated uh, riffs. And uh, I have to tell you, I'm going to be buying that box set possibly this weekend. Okay. <laughs> My wife might be in the next room. I got headphones on. I don't know if she's going to pop in <laughs> another one, but, <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm going to be getting, getting the riffs box set. But if you've ever, if you've ever played, uh, a palladium game character creation can be a bit challenging because there's a lot of stuff to go through i've only got to deal with what two three pages and yeah and, and riffs is definitely our most complicated game right i mean kevin's right. just got so many years of history in there and you know riffs is literally a kitchen sink kind of setting so you've right. got bioware and cybernetics and supers and you know everything in the world in there so there's a lot to cover there and is I, a lot to cover yeah so uh streamlining that down was definitely a challenge but I, I think the guys who did it you know i was just a part of that i didn't write it myself uh i think they did a great job and yeah. kevin's happy with it so we're happy and that was and that was very very well done i, I was so glad that i did invest in it and uh, i did buy initially uh the three books and then the box set came out and I gave those three books to a friend saying, here, run a game. I'm getting the box. Set. There you go. And, and um, <laughs> to see, to see it compared versus uh, D20 games. Um, no, I'm not putting down D and D five E, but there's a difference between a beginning level, a beginning level savage worlds, fantasy, fantasy character and a beginning level D and D character. I mean, Sure. Come on, your, your, your first level wizard still gonna have to worry about that herd of cats. <laughs> As a herd of feral right. cats, and you just walk through a fish market and they want you. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so little Benny the Mighty is is in for is in for a hard time. Whereas your beginning level Savage Worlds character, your beginning player went through a labor of love of putting this guy together. You make sure he can cast these spells. He has this level in this, has this level in that. His hindrances, he might have taken elderly, which is a real big <laughs> one. <laughs> but well, I recently ran a campaign where all the characters were elderly. 
I told them I was going to run the Silver Sentinels, and they thought, oh, like the Supers? Like, the, yeah, like used to be out years ago. And I said, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, you know, it was 20 years past their big heyday in their prime, right? And there was a, a, a uh, an old threat they had defeated had arisen, and they had to, you know, strap the the boots back on, put the girdle under the armor, and, and head back out. <laughs> it was a blast. And I'm pretty sure they loved it. But everybody, <laughs> everybody's saying, oh, I can go and take elderly. It's like, really? Go ahead, take it. That's, that's uh -huh. awesome. It's rough. You're not moving as fast. <laughs> Minus one to all your vigor rolls. Minus it's really to tough to soak. To yeah. All your vigor rolls. Yeah. Yes. Yes, and when you add in other things like minus two. <laughs> yeah, and I like to throw fatigue at my players just constantly, right? Fatigue is how we beat people up, right? Right. It's like knocking right. away a few hit points in a D20 game. Correct, and, yeah. and fatigue can be a bear. And mm -hmm. uh, my group experienced fatigue for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, the 24-hour mark is passed. Everybody get a point of fatigue. You haven't slept yet. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Oh, oh, they hate they hate hearing. Oh, you hear the gong. No. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of my old insomniac days. Oh, uh, mine too. And it happened to do with playing online games too. But I'm not going to talk about that. Okay. <laughs> uh, the dynamic role play of this system, uh, I haven't experienced with anything else, even with narrative based games. And uh, seeing your focus in that. Also, you know, what, what you have over basically anybody else uh, in this particular, in this industry is you have 19 different licensed settings, universes. It was 18, then you did Savage Worlds Pathfinder. <laughs> is that many? Yeah, 19, li 19 licensed settings. Licensed settings. Nineteen licensed. Well, most of them are ours, yep. so that feels a little high to me. But we certainly have quite a few between Sixth Gun, the Goon, Fear Agent, right. Risk, right. Pathfinder, ETU right. is actually a license. So there's there's quite a few. Yep i yeah. I went to your I went to your site and I counted them. Okay. Okay. Yes. Boss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're the boss. And support that you have in place with players, GMs, and designers. Uh, your licensing system that you have that you have there on your page, um, which uh, it is uh, Adventurers Guild. It's the Savage World Adventurer Guild. Yes, a swag, and that is only on drive through. And that is only on drive through. Yep. Okay, and I can say it has produced a, a lot of things coming out for it what, yeah it, and just to clarify that we have a couple of different layers right so there's the aces these are people who apply to us and we approve their stuff and say hey this is good because we don't want to get into that that d20 uh open gaming license problem that they had you know where there was just a whole lot of kind of not not so good stuff on the market so you know those are the ones we officially say these guys are you know these are pretty good check these out and they can sell their stuff anywhere uh, including Kickstarters, print, you know, uh, retail, whatever they want to do. The swag program, we don't approve. So anybody can do that, right? So if you're kind of starting out and you're new at it and you just want to give it a shot, you can do that. And drive through has the mechanisms to support that, put it out there and market it. And then uh, we get 10% of whatever you make. So it's, it's a very small royalty, right? But it's, it's just enough up there, we think, to make people take it seriously and realize that, you know, this is uh, something you should be, professional about and i don't mean you got to go out and hire you know brahm to do your covers right no. but you need oh. to you need to consider the customer right and make sure that they're getting something worthwhile for their money okay now do you personally go through every product that they throw through there no no i don't oh. see any of them hardly any of them hardly any of them okay yeah, they are it is is an automatic system and they're just out when i see uh people talking about something on like our facebook page generally that's when i'll go grab them and check them out there's some good stuff there oh good stuff well yeah. uh i went through drive through rpg and you have 2992 products supporting savage worlds wow on drive through rpg i had no idea that's a lot yes 2,992. <laughs> oh, with your game generated as the engine. Wow. That's awesome. That is awesome. How you feel about that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, 
happy, obviously, but yes. I really, just like you running your games, right? The goal was we hit on something we thought was a, a pretty good uh, toolkit that empowered people, right? To run whatever you want. And the fact that people are doing that, that's success. All right. All right. Now, uh, one of the best, I would say one of the, one of the pinnacles of Savage Worlds is one, your level of involvement. Your level of involvement, involvement, I'm talking about on Facebook, you're in that Facebook group. Sure. And you answer questions, you're accessible. Um, Try to be. You're open. And I don't know when you find the time to have personal time. Must be with gaming or something, but... Um, well, my kids are grown. Okay. <laughs> so that helps. Okay. And, uh, you know, it is my life. You know, I, I do live and breathe the stuff and I genuinely like the people I get to interact with like you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. If I didn't, I wouldn't. <laughs> right. People do what they want to do. That's what I've found in my half century on this planet. Oh, oh, I, I wish someone would take these gifts of life back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like my half century on this side. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I hate to hear that. Yeah. I mean, it's okay, but but I want the 20 year old body again. <laughs> right. Sure. Everybody does. Um, but uh, I really appreciate it. And I'm and I know that the community appreciates that because a question might come up about how an edge is supposed to work or how a rule works. And then some people come in and say, well, I found this and this. And all of a sudden, bam, oh, that's Shane. Okay, well, I guess this trumps it. Well, hopefully it's Clint. <laughs> because, hopefully it's Clint. I mean, you know, most stuff I can answer pretty easily. But, uh, you know, sometimes there's, there's some edge cases here and there, right? And Clint just has years and years of answering these things on the forum. So he's probably answered it 10 times already. Right. And, and it, literally, if it's 10 times, you know, we'll probably try to get it into an update or the next printing or whatever. But, you know, there's weird stuff that comes out when you do, you know, any place, any time, there's going to be some strange stuff that comes up. So, you know, for, for as little as we have to actually ask questions, it's pretty nice. And I think one of the reasons why is because we kind of hit a sweet spot between figure it out yourself and there's a rule for that. Right. So in my mind, you know, my opinion 3.0 and 3.5 went a little too far in there's a rule for that because I felt like if there's not a rule for that, I can't do it. Now I know that's not true, right? <clears throat> and any GM mm -hmm. should, should do whatever they want. But I feel like we have, you know, enough foundational stuff that you can fill in, fill in the blanks yourself 90% of the time. Right. And that's, I think that's been one of the secrets to our success. I remember when, uh, you know, a certain very, very big game came out and had 121 pages of errata for it, right? And I think, yeah. I think with Suede, we're up to three pages of there's some actual errata and there's some clarifications that people just didn't get, you know, that our playtesters thought was just great. So, you know, that's okay. And that's, you know, that's even including some art and some, some graphics in there. So that's not too bad. Okay. And as far as keeping up with current changes, um, there's always that free post they have in drive through RPG saying Savage World Adventure Edition update. Yep, it's on our site. It's on drive through. Yep. Um, it's on your site. It's on drive through. It's no charge. And of course, th those are the neat things. Some companies don't do a rod of that fast. Well, some I need them because I'm playing the game. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, some companies don't do a rod at all. Yeah, here's a page. Good luck. <laughs> I tell you what, I mean, I completely botched tentacles in the first printing of Suede. I have no idea how. I remember playtesting it. Everything was great. And then our German translator gets a hold of it and they say, how does this work? And I went, I have no idea. <laughs> so I dug up, you know, went through my notes. I found the post. We got it up there on the update. I think they're corrected in the second and the upcoming third printing and certainly on the PDF if you have that. But, you know, little things like that when you're a small company and we were basically one and a half people at the time, little things like that are going to slip through. Right. So, again, I'm really proud of, of how clean it is overall, but there's always going to be stuff there. Somebody told me in my early days uh, no book is ever finished, it's published, 
right? And every little error just eats at you as a designer. But, you know, over time you learn to live with it and you, you do your best and you keep doing your best. And as soon as there's a, an issue that's going to affect people, you fix it. And you hope that they'll pay attention to the website, but man, it's, <laughs> it's just hard. It's hard to drive people to anything. It's like the moment we ended the, the Paizo Pathfinder Kickstarter, right? We get like 30 people saying, I didn't hear anything about this. And, and then we, we have to give them the late backer pledge, right? Mm -hmm. And I feel bad about using Facebook to constantly push our stuff, right? Because I want it to be, you know, friends and what's going on in your world and that kind of thing. But, you know, we got to, we got to let you know. And that's why most of the people on there follow me personally. They want to know what, what I'm working on. You know, if they're not, you know, personal friends or whatever from years back. So it's a, it's a tight rope, but we do our best. Yes. Now, and uh, one last thing to go over with you. I, um, I want to know what is next? What is next? So the big thing I'm working on are the companions, right? So I'm, I'm doing some cleanup on uh, Pathfinder. I kind of do a final proof of almost everything that goes out the door with us. The one exception is Rifts. Uh, Sean Owen Robertson, who is in charge of that, is a better guy for that than me. I am called in when there's specific things to do, right? And then that's kind of one of my joys is the Rifts line. For the most part, I get to read it like a fan when it comes out. Yes. Right? Okay. So I'm helping with the mechanics and stuff that I've got, you know, a little more familiarity with. And then, you know, the background and story stuff, I get to read mostly like a fan, excuse me, with a few exceptions. So finish up Pathfinder, do my final proof there, and then I'm on to the companions. And figuring out what our fantasy companion is versus what Pathfinder is, is one of our big challenges right now, right? We know, we know quite a bit of it. Um, there are some things we're still figuring out, like we've got a really comprehensive bestiary for Savage Pathfinder. Yes. How much of that gets duplicated in the fantasy companion, right? Because if you're a true fan and you buy both, we don't want to screw you and make you buy the same content twice. But if you only buy one, we want to make sure that you're not missing, you know, important stuff, orcs, dragons, you know, whatever from the other one. So that we're wrestling with a bit. All the other companions, uh, you know, if you have the previous versions of them, you know, you know, you, you know basically what they're like. They're right. just mostly, you know, there's, there's a lot of cleanup, a lot of streamlining, you know, what lessons did we learn? What could have been, you know, better explained and maybe a little bigger, you know, more critters, more items, more gear, that kind of thing. Okay. So you should possibly, I'm not telling you what to do, but there's other companies do beast Jerry one, beast Jerry two, beast Jerry three. And we will, but it's still, yeah. if you buy the fantasy companion and you buy the uh, Pathfinder Beast Dairy One. I'll be How doing that. Lap is there, right? That's right. <laughs> thanks. That's what I got to figure out. <laughs> uh, other stuff that's coming out is Tim Early's Holler, which is just amazing. And uh, we we have a few things in the can we're waiting on. Necessary Evil Three Cosmic Crisis, which is kind of our Guardians of the Galaxy uh, Green Lantern Corps Necessary Evil book. Daryl Hayhurst wrote that a while ago. We play tested it. It's been over a year now, and we're just waiting for the right slot to release it. And Daryl also wrote uh, something that I've been sitting on since Kung Fu Panda came out. So that tells you how long ago it's been called The Legend of Ghost Mountain. And the premise is you're this group of very special. They're not really samurai, but I'm going to call them samurai for the, for the quick some for the elevator pitch, right? Who guard the gate to the seven hells and all the spirits come through there and something has gone wrong. And it's a campaign boxed adventure where, you know, you play these different uh, individuals with very unique character types and you have to go out into the world and solve, solve this problem. So we got some pretty neat stuff coming. Nice. Nice. And oh, do you, uh, does Pinnacle do anything for convention support? So uh, we have actually started hiring some people up and we just hired um, a guy who's, um, Who's, who, who is doing, we, we do, it's been very sporadic based on what we have, right? Because again, we're just such a small company. But now that we have, you know, a full-time guy who's handling our marketing and convention support and hopefully uh, living games and so forth in the future, he is putting together a plan to do more than we have before. So yes, I think we will be able to do more very soon. 
but we're also kind of waiting to see what are conventions look like you know this year as opposed to next year and so on i figure next year they're back to normal i think right. this year who knows and we've run our own virtual conventions too like uh halloween we did where people come and, and play you know online games with you know me and a whole bunch of other people so we'll do more of that too okay well, uh, I guess that that's all I'm going to bother you with tonight on your Friday. Not a bother, buddy. You know, it's good to see. You. I feel like I feel like I haven't, you know, I haven't seen you in in twenty some years, and I know you mostly these days from Facebook, right? Okay. And, and when you popped up, I said, "Oh, yeah." Not sure which convention, but okay, know that guy. I'm real good with faces, right? So when I see faces, I remember names are, are tougher, right? But uh, I don't know, conversations like this, I feel like, like, you know, we haven't missed a beat. So no, it's good to me. I enjoy these. Okay. I'm, I'm glad you do. Hope to see more of you soon in the future. Ditto. Uh, maybe we can sit across from a table. You know, we have, uh, one of the things we're doing, we're doing a lot of games on Twitch. I would love to get you on there. <laughs> we, we want people who are entertaining to watch. Okay. Right? And you, you just exude enthusiasm. Man. <laughs> just a little, just a little. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's all about. That's what our whole hobby is about. Yes. Yes. And you guys were the driver and your stuff was the driver that, that kept me going. Believe me. Uh, <laughs> up to June. It's like, let me open up this Kickstarter. I bought back in, <laughs> back in 2018. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. And, and I'd like to thank you for your time in your busy schedule. Congratulations again on the combination Thanks, buddy. of Pathfinder and Savage Worlds. So Savage Worlds, Pathfinder. And I'll, I'll be looking for more of your stuff in the future. And uh, I can see what I do to keep driving the game. And thank you for coming to our, to our inaugural video cast. Thanks for having me, Alan. I appreciate it. All right. And that was Mr. <laughs> Shane Hensley. <laughs> well, that's it for this interview. Once again, I'd like to thank Shane Hensley for taking the time out of his busy schedule to do this interview. It was a lot of fun, so thank you, Shane. If you're interested in any of the games or settings we've talked about, we'll provide some links where you can find out more in the comments of this video. If you'd like to see more of these videos, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel by clicking the bell and then all alerts. So YouTube will let you know when we upload new content to the channel. We'll be not only talking about the leaders and drivers of the tabletop gaming hobby and miniature painting community, but we'll also be reviewing miniatures, board games, 3D printing for gaming, events, and also delivering to you instructional how-tos to get you started in this creative, fantastic hobby. I'm Alan Blunt, and you've been watching the Unreality, Unreality Core. core.